Hello, 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 hello. You're tuned in to Sip Sip with Kathleen. And I'm your host, Kathleen with a K. And it is Hump Day Jump Day. Sorry for the late broadcast. I had some technical difficulties. But you know what? My guest, she still hung in with me. So I'm very, very, very grateful. So I need y'all to come on in. Make sure that you bring your pen and your paper. And she's going to give you that great energy and that information that we're going to need for our lives. This beautiful lady right here. I'm trying to get, get people to join. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, join the watch party. Okay. See, she's helping me out. She's teaching me some things that I didn't know. I always saw the things in watch party, but I honestly never knew what that was. So thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. I met this beautiful young lady at an event not too long ago, and she has a book out. So I was super excited to get her on the show, and she took time out of her busy schedule just to be on Sip Sip. Uh, for you all that know her, I know you. She has a big following. So for my people that may not know her, her name is Miss Latanya Taylor. She is a TV coach on Iyana. 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 I want to. Iyana. Iyana. There you go. Yeah. I need to get it right because I know we always pronounce her name wrong. I want to get it right because I don't want her coming for me. Oh, she. I know she. I know with you. But she's a TV coach on that show, Fix My Life. And she is the author of uh, Juicy Reverse. My Juicy Reverse. Yes, to show them that book. <laughs> yes. So when I met her at the event, I was like, ooh, what is that? So I wanted you all to find out, you know, maybe this is something that we need in our lives. But she got a lot of information, so we're just going to jump in. So how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm still still forming so that, for, the, so that folks can see and see, see us. She's helping, <laughs> she's helping get me together, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited. So, okay. So get, get you together. Yes. Yes. <laughs> she has a lot of energy, and she has a lot of titles. You have a lot of titles behind your name. But um, the one that resonated with me was a spiritual mid, a spiritual midwife. And I was like, ooh, what's that? Uh, yeah. You want me to answer? Yes. Because she, because I know she got to answer. But yep. Because yes, yes, yes. I want you to answer that, and then we'll jump into it. Oh sure. Okay. So, a spiritual mid. Well, first of all, my company is Rebirth International. Okay. So, I find myself uh, working with women to rebirth themselves. Okay. Okay. Um and. How does a woman rebirth herself if she doesn't have a midwife? Well, you know what? Okay. You're right. You're right. And You're the right. midwife teaches you, invites you, helps you to push. Yes. To yes. breathe. Right. To manifest. Then that to get in position. You're right. In order to birth, you got to get in position. Right. Some people like to squat in physical burden. Some people like to lay on their back. Yes. But the point is, some people have to have C-section. Yes. True, true. That's the difficult kind. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. ones that got to be cut. Okay, okay. The baby's so big right. that it can't come through the womb in the regular right. way. Right. Ain't that good, girl? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I like that. Like, who would have ever thought of that? You know, as, as as moms, and even if you're not a mom, you know what birth is. So it's like, is it like starting over with a new chapter and different things? That well, uh, well, I work, I, I my, my business has grown in, in my ministry. I call it a marketplace ministry. Okay. okay. Because it has grown to focus on purpose, pleasure, okay. and passion. Okay. And I, I help women to rebirth themselves by looking at their blind or finding their blind spots in the area of love, sex, and money. Okay. Did you hear that? Love, sex, and money. If you can find your blind spots in the area of love, sex, and money, Mm -hmm. most of the time it's a domino effect in other areas of your life. And so I help them to heal our heart because the heart, out of the heart, flows the issues of life. I, I definitely agree. And the heart is very connected to the womb. And so as a woman, when our heart and our womb are not matching 
energetically, we wonder why certain things are manifesting or not manifesting. And so I do the work with women who are ready, who are rebirth ready. Because you yes, gotta be ready. You gotta be rebirth yeah, ready. Right. Because right. there's labor involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And labor is not, <laughs> and labor is not always easy. Not easy. A lot of us have it. Okay. So okay, so um, take us to the place of what was your story to get you to the place of your oh, ready sure. with you? Absolutely. And those of you who are watching on IG Live, I'm here with Sip Sip with Kathleen. <laughs> you see her over there. This is, and so we're talking about, now I'm getting ready to talk about my book a little bit, my story. Because in here I do talk about yes. my story. Um, and basically I had to rebuild myself. And... And all of the, all that went with rebirthing myself. Um, can you all hear us? Okay, because we are in a coffee shop, and so we're sip sipping. But I want to make sure you can hear us. <laughs> can you hear us? <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, I see okay. my people okay. over here. That's, that's what you call that love. That's what's up. Um, so my my story started with a little girl with a broken heart. Oh wow. Um. Don't say it like that. Because no, no, you know that's very common. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm, but I'm just saying, it, it goes back to that. Like, as a, as a child. Oh, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, for, for a girl, when, her, when you, you grow up, mm-hmm. your little girls grow up to be, to be grown women True. that can cover over with their success and their achievements and their accomplishments. And so, that, that, that's a part of my story, but... My, when my mother and father divorced, it created um, a gap in terms of the unanswered questions that I had. And so, for me, the story started with me being in relationships and particularly getting into a marriage where I'm like, how did I get here? I'm a metaphysician, I'm a minister, I'm teaching, I'm preaching. Yeah, How everything. in the world, I'm, I'm, a, psych, I'm, I'm a psychology um, <laughs> educator. How in the world did I get here? And that, that helped me, that, that question, answering that question for myself took me deeper because my womb began to speak to me. Um, I was going, in my mind, in, in my, in, check this out now, in my mind, <laughs> I, I had gotten the house, the car, the husband, and was riding nice, living nice. Good. I was good, but what we call it, yeah, good. It good. Yeah. And um, I wanted to get pregnant, and I go to the doctor, and I, I start going to the doctor. Every time the doctor would do a procedure, I'd get another download. I'd get a download. Um, I'm very empathic, very intuitive, so my womb began to speak to me. And one of the one day, because I was going to doctors, and I tell the story about this in my book. I was going to doctors for years, saying, "Can you check this? I think something's going on. I think you know there's something going on with my womb. You know, I'm not getting pregnant. Yada yada yada." My womb said to me, while I'm driving, spoke, spoke. It said to me. <laughs> Because the, the surgeon had confirmed what I had known all along. And so the, so what my womb said is that your loyalty to everybody else is a pattern. When are you going to be loyal to yourself? Girl. He was like, girl. Right no, seriously. Like, seriously. I, I had to pull over and wail. I wail because I have been faithful to God, religion, I followed dress codes, I followed diets, I followed all the things that we're taught that we're supposed to follow in order for us to be able to be rewarded. Right. And so here I am asking myself, how did I get here? Wait, wait. Me? Why me? What's up? Yeah, so then, so, so that process, and a lot of times women do have their wounds speaking to them, but we don't pay attention. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I agree. We don't I pay agree. attention. I agree. I agree. You know what I mean? We really, we have so many distractions around us. The things, the comfort, 
And what happened is I had a coach. Always have a coach that has a coach. Always have a therapist that has a therapist. And so my wound spoke to me and I called my coach and I told her what I was hearing and what I was receiving. And um, she said to me, she said, Latanya, she said, if you don't face this and deal with this, you make something may grow inside of you that you can't cut out. Wow. Because I was diagnosed with fibroids. Many women know that you, when you have fibroids, um, you don't always have, you can shrink them, you can change your diet. And at that time, I didn't know. The pain was so great for me. At that time, I didn't know. And so when she said that, I just, everything shifted. It wasn't what I wanted to hear. A coach, a, a, a therapist is not always going to tell you what you want to hear, but they will tell you what you need to shift you. And she got my attention. And I, I began to do the deep dive, and that's that's when the feminine, because the feminine, I had been doing all kinds of leadership development work, all kinds of training, right. all types of processes. I have I've been with Iyanla for 20 years, but it was the feminine. Right. And this is what I say to women. We we have to reposition how we think about womanhood because many of us still think of womanhood and femininity as being the weaker position. And so in in my vulnerability I found my strength. Cuz I had to get really really clear with myself about how I got here. How did I get into uh, this marriage? How did I get all of the things I wanted? Because I'm a powerful manifester, and a lot of you are powerful manifestors. Man. And we get what we want. Yeah. And I, I had gotten I, what I wanted. You got everything. You got all the good, all the things that... But I didn't have me. What? Wow. <laughs> Say that. Say that. Say that. I did not have me. Mm. So I had to get me. Okay, so when you when you got to that place, in order to get to you, did you just start writing from there, or did oh, you, no. or did you start? Oh out? God, no! This book, this this did not. I did not start writing from there. I started doing my work from there. Okay. So I, I, you know, at that time I was, you know, I was, but I was paying, I was fully present with myself. Meaning accepting what it was. And, yeah. Because I think a lot of times we I, don't accept that we be still in denial. That's why we don't get to where we're supposed to be. And denial right. creates delay. Denial creates drama. Denial creates confusion. And we can be, we can be high performing women. Right. Right. But personally feeling insignificant private. When we go home, how do you feel? Yeah. What's you going know? on in the house when nobody's not looking? When no one's yeah. looking. When you in that mirror looking at yourself, what are you, what are you feeling? What yes, are you thinking? absolutely. So that's what I did. I did the work. I call, you know, many of us in this work, we call it shadow work. Okay. And okay. so I did, I did this. I had to face my own shadow. But I also did a lot of pleasure. Okay. No, okay. okay. So the, the yeah, let's talk about the pleasure here. Yeah. Y'all be quiet on that. You got a sip on it. But I can't. Well, okay, my sip. sip is yeah, she got her. She got her sip. <laughs> pleasure healed me. Okay. It was pleasure that healed me. See, I knew how to go into the dark places of myself. I was trained. I was trained coach. Iyanla right. trained me. Yes. So I knew how to do that. But I didn't know how to be fully present with my healing and celebrate my womanhood. Okay, okay. So I did that. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, my best friend, and that's why it's good for women to look at their relationships with other women. I and agree to, with that. And be able to I agree heal that. that. I agree. Because if you can, if you don't have a tribe of women that can pull you up, oh, oh man, not just hear that? not just shoot you yeah. about the problem, right, right. Because I've had you. that before. <laughs> I've had the women I can get on the telephone with and be on there for hours talking about everybody else. But when you're talking about mm -hmm. yourself, yeah. and so my girl, my good girlfriend who had, had done some work, some deep diving work in the feminine a year before, had lost her father. And I want to I wanna use her because typically when we lose something, whether it's divorce, whether it's some, someone in our life, when, when, when grief is present, 
we think that we're supposed to be sorrowful and sad all the time. Right. And I watched her, an introvert who doesn't talk a lot. One night she <laughs> talked my, my ear off for two hours and our new transformation had taken place. Right. Right. And so when she told me when I was going through my, because now I'm, I'm married, I, I'm, I have buyer's remorse. Right. How did I get here? Like, what's going on? <laughs> and so now on? I said, okay. And um, she said, Latanya, she said, come do, come, come, come. It takes to have some experiences with me. Okay. And that was that that changed my life. changed my. It took me deeper into the feminine with, with dancing and yes, orgasms can heal you. Did y'all hear wow. me? Your orgasms See, I didn't even can heal that. you. That's powerful. Your orgasms are not just for. Um, See, I didn't your know. I didn't significant know. other. <laughs> yeah. That's good to know because I really didn't feel. Yeah, okay. Do you know how many women who are married who have children are not orgasmic? I've heard that, but I, but I didn't know whether it was really, really true. So, wow. Dr. Christian Northrup now prescribes orgasm and pleasure as a part of women healing any di- disorder in their womb. And there are many, many oh, doctors who now. And pleasure doesn't have a limit. Pleasure has many forms. So we have been so conditioned by sin consciousness. Okay, y'all know what yeah. sin consciousness is, right? If you, you know what you can let us know. sin consciousness yeah. Yeah. is. And so many of us have spent our lives trying to be good, and so we get our pleasure in the dark. Right, right, right. right. Okay? Right. right, But when you can bring your pleasure to the light, you lift it up higher beyond a low vibrational relationship with just sex. Right, right, right. And when you raise it higher, now you're raising your vibration, and it serves you, and you don't serve it. Right. Okay, okay. That's, yeah, that's, that's good to know. Cause I think, yeah, some people get quiet. Put on your steel So, okay, so we, so we did pleasure. And did we do purpose? purpose? Well, purpose is first. I knew my purpose. So, you knew so it, I already, that's what I'm good. telling you. I, no, I'm telling you when I was, when I had, the, 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 my wound began to speak, I, I knew my purpose. I was walking in my purpose. Yes. Okay. Already. Okay. okay. But sometimes we're walking in our purpose, but it becomes obligatory, and we can still be distracted by this pursuit of purpose. Y'all hear me? I want somebody to take that note. Yeah, you can yeah, still yeah, be yeah. distracted by the pursuit of purpose. But you know, and I, y'all know I'm a minister too, so so every now and then I might slip a little, slip it a little in. something in. <laughs> but you know, you know, scripture talks about how that thing will, that grace and mercy will, will hunt you down right. and greet you like a kiss. Yeah. Say it. Huh? <laughs> Why? You're right. Yep. So imagine yep. if we didn't think we had to go pursue, but we got in position. It comes to us. Yeah. But we don't believe in that. So many of us as women are dressed up, stiletto made up but our minds are functioning like men Ooh, that's, yeah, yeah. you know what that's very true, that's very I, true. I, yeah we're women very true we, we are we're men in, in 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 women's bodies because we've been conditioned by this world to think to be to do and to have like the masculine Yes, you're so. I was getting ready. I was getting ready. To, yeah. So you took me to the question I was going to ask. You're right because I know. I really feel like I think like a lot of times I, I, I'm on certain things. I move like that. It serves a purpose. The masculine. We all have the masculine within us, so it serves a purpose. Mm-hmm. But not when you're at war with the masculine, because right. many women are at war with the masculine unconsciously. And so, <laughs> okay, that's what she's saying. It you better say that. And so, that's purpose. That's pleasure. Now, passion is something else, right? Because passion is that fire that burns. It's the desire. And many of us don't have a relationship with our desires. If I ask many of you, what do you want? If I ask you, what do you want? A lot of times. We we don't we we think about the things and and yeah, that's the physical, fine mm-hmm. and like the um, materialistic things and maybe accomplishments and stuff that we yeah and then what's underneath that right right yeah I've been right? in, I've been in this space before 
Because why do you want what you want? And why is it a want and not a desire? There is a difference. You gotta come and work with me to find out what the difference is. <laughs> you better say that. <laughs> say that. I'm sure we didn't think that. We thought it was probably the same. Most people well, probably want is like the things. absence of a thing. Mm. Mm. So we we pursuing prosperity, but we gotta lack consciousness. <laughs> mm, okay, 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 okay. You know what I'm saying? Right, Especially right. in this world where people want to be famous, want to go viral, or it's so now we're in a world where people are constantly evaluating themselves based on what somebody else is doing. And depending on where you live, you yeah. started long before the yeah, the, Instagram the, 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 and all the yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you don't know what they had to do to get all that stuff. Anyway, you're just looking at what you see. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. how you know we we want the we want the glory, but we don't know people's story. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we don't so want to have to live their story. Yeah, you right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. So that's why you know I started to tell my story. I've always told my story to my clients. And, and you know what, the reason why you look at this cover, you know that's me, y'all, right? Y'all know that's me. That's me. My, hu- and my husband approved it. <laughs> I ain't disrespectful. That's me. That's me. But, and, and Iyanla approved. It's Iyanla Vincent approved. <laughs> the reason why I say that, though, not that I need anybody's approval. Because for me to take this, I had to be already free. I already be free, right? Yes. And so... But I'm a minister. Right. And it, who, who, I'm, I'm, I'm a minister. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm Greg Brennan, Latanya Taylor. But I'm free. Yep, yep. Mm, yeah. <laughs> he who the sun sets free is free indeed. <laughs> wow. I like this. This is beautiful. Y'all see this? Okay. So I have. I was, um, oh yeah, go ahead. Girl, I, saw you know I, I saw something. I saw something that you posted, and I wanted you to explain it to me because I think I kind of resonate with it. You said often we are only impacted by the people that reject or ignore us because way too much we focus on them. Look up, level up. Look up, level up. <laughs> yep. Yeah, a lot of times um, rejection and. Um, the people who didn't give us what we needed drives us, and become and become and that becomes an unconscious focus to get our needs met. Whereas, when you are focused higher, right, um, then a lot of times you will be able to pay attention to all the people who are around you who are cheering for you, who are available to you, but you can't see that. When you're so focused on who's what's not there, because if you focus on what's not there, you can continue you continue to get what's not there. That's law of attraction. Wherever I focus on grows. So I so you know there's a period I, I you know where I felt like I was the black sheep of my family. That's a part of my story. I talk about it a little bit in here. I felt like I was the black sheep. And because I felt like I was the black sheep of my family, oftentimes I carried that filter with me wherever I went, right? And so even though I didn't really, I wasn't consciously aware of it, in my heart I'm, I, I, I was focusing on the love that I didn't have. Sometimes to the point where I wasn't aware of the love that was right there around me. And that, and that, and and first I had to find it in me, because what you focus on grows. So I'm love. So the more I focus on the love that I am, and not the story of why I was, I thought I was, why I thought I was rejected, or the black sheep, or whatever, because that many of us live in our story. We we live in it. I don't care if it's domestic violence. If you start to become become identified as a domestic violence survivor, you still are focusing on on the domestic violence. If yes, if you are are rags to riches, this is why a lot of times we see people who who get it, they can't they can't sustain it, they can't hold it because their consciousness is shifted, even though their address has has 
Because your address can change, but if your consciousness has not changed, you take that same mentality wherever you go. And you won't be there long. That's really, that's that's a really good thought. Because now, cause it, now I think I'm thinking about different things that have happened in my life or whatever. And mm-hmm. You said, like, you focus on the belief, but you're not really focused on it. That, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot. I can think about different things that I've done. Like, oh, okay. That's why it's kind of harder for me to let go because really I am still holding on to it. So how do you, so how do, how, what do you need to do? Is this where the rebirthing process comes Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, Okay, okay, so this is where you start to work on your wound, start to listen to your wound. It's probably talking to you anyway. You're there you probably go. ignoring it there you to go. get to where you need to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, I, I think that my work helps women to shift from listening to the wound mm-hmm. and learning how to listen to the womb. Ooh, okay. Did you hear that? Okay. 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 I'm like, okay. That makes sense. For women, for women, although there is a way for men to be able to listen to the womb, because the womb is not just a physical thing. The womb is a spiritual consciousness, a spiritual awareness. It is um, a higher place. But a lot of times we haven't been taught how to hold it higher. I agree. We haven't been taught. Um, Our mothers um, have focused on survival, and they taught us how to survive. And that goes, that predates, you know, way back. Yeah, 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 way back. As you can tell, as little girls, and we're growing up, and as women, women, that's what we're doing. We're in survival mode. And we've learned how to survive. And everybody's survival mode is different. Everybody has a different survival mode. And so that's why comparing yourself to someone, you don't know what a person's survival mode is because a person that's from the streets might have to, have to survive a little different than someone in the suburbs. Oh, absolutely. But they both are in survival mode. Right. right. Someone who is an achieved person, maybe their survival is accomplishment. That mean they're healed. But we pay attention to shiny things. And, and, and so if they got the shiny things, then they become certified by the public as having some authority that maybe they, that they haven't done the work to attain. You're right about that. And they probably, they, they might be walking all up under all of that anyway. We don't know. Until they tell our yeah. story or <laughs> yeah. they have a public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, okay, so now that you, you created the book, tell, the, because a lot of people um, that your, your watchers definitely know what you do, but how do they reach you? What do they need to do if they want to work with you? Or what, what do they need to come to, to get to get this work, you know, to help us be better, you know, to get ourselves together. Well, I, I have programs. I have a, a 30-day program, um, and, and it's, uh, and I don't really like to just call it a program, but I come from the world of program development right. yeah. <laughs> and Absolutely. curriculum development, but I have a 30-day process, right? Okay. And 30 days to learn how to live in your sweet spot. I call that one the juicy you. Yeah, I see. Did you have something recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a, yeah. a Linton edition. It's called the yeah. juicy you. And so that whole whole thing of learning how to um, to celebrate your womanhood while you heal it, healing the feminine, because this is the journey of healing the feminine through pleasure and sacred process. So while I'm talking about my juicy rebirth, I'm, I'm also teaching and sharing with others how to have, to rebirth your juicy. So we can be good, so we can have Yeah, yeah, because yeah. juicy is not just uh, a sweet wound, <laughs> the nectar that flows from your, your womb, although that's a good thing. Um, juicy is also your power source. You know when you will go to do the jumper papers of, of a you car, say you, you, you give ask, me give me some juice, right? When yeah. you when you get ready to, t- if your lights go off in your house and you go look for the breaker box yeah. so you can <laughs> give it some juice. When we talk about a, a power grid, we talk about that as juice. You right. <laughs> <laughs> that's unique. And, that's so unique. that's juicy. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so, so, um, so that's the juicy you. Um, and then I have a rites of passage program, an adult women rites of passage. How do we begin to heal women? If we don't, if we don't return to the, the ways that taught us how to become women, 
And most most of us, even our sons, don't have a rites of passage from the phase of moving from girl to womanhood, which is a celebration, it's an assignment, and it's a responsibility. And so I have the rites of passage process, which is a six months rites of passage, that the crescendo is the, the consecration ceremony that we have at the end. So it's a beautiful, beautiful process and celebration, and your hand is held and you're supported. And you can find more about all of this on latanyataylor.com. Latanya Taylor. Latanya Taylor. I'm, I'm showing you this so you can get the spelling, spelling right. of my name, latanyataylor.com. Um, um, you can find any of that. I also do some VIP private coaching and that type of thing when I'm available. Yeah, that's, well, that's far. So I, I was blessed to be able to get just one sip of her time. It's not that bad. It's just that I've been in production. That's yeah, all. But you are busy. You are busy. <laughs> You're helping us. Oh, yeah. yeah. I give yeah. thanks. Give thanks. How many of you watch Young La Fix My Life? You know we won the... the um, Emmy, right? Yeah. No, it, it, yeah. The NAACP image award. Well, okay. Well, I knew it was something. I, I knew. I knew. I saw you post something. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's give it up. Well, okay. So tell us, okay, so with that type of work, is is it all? Because we, we see after... You know, we see the process after, but is it a lot of work? Like, is it really a lot that y'all have to do? Oh, my putting God, that together? yes. Y'all have long yes. hours that y'all yes. work Yeah, because we don't see that part, so I just was wondering. Oh, like, my God, yes. It is consuming. But it is the most rewarding work to be able to translate. Sometimes weeks of work into 42 minutes oh wait a minute I didn't, okay <laughs> so <on>. okay so <laughs> now so now that makes sense okay so when we see it we see it 42 minutes but this is something that might have well, this is what two and three weeks worth of time that y'all are putting putting together and piecing into we're coaching it. that's my role as a coach we're the, the, the client the the guests will work with us after they have gone through the process because we didn't even know we didn't know that Oh we yeah, I know. Trust yeah. me, when people say some of the horrible things that they say on the internet, like, she should have did this. Like you don't, you don't even, even know. know. You don't even know. And and the footage, you know, so much footage is left on the cutting room floor. And so um, there's and then there's something that happens when they get in the presence of Iyama. So even though we've been working, you know, there is we. We pray, we cover, we do all kind of energy work. We are there holding the space. We're, it's, it, it's, we do the real work. It's no, it's not, it's not play play. Right. <laughs> and, and I'm glad you said that because a lot of people, you know, they may not, they may not yeah. know that, but you know, to go in and you have to hear people. People have stories. We have stories. We have things. That's, and so, okay. Okay. and and we we still work with with guests after they go home. That's good. So they're not just out there. If they want to continue to work, I should say that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you know, the work it starts a process. It starts a journey for anyone. Yeah. Okay. So it's transformation to on TV. Yes. Shout out to Auntie Oprah and Ma- Mama Ia. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> Is this on the own network? It's on the what own day network. Is, what, what day it comes on on Saturday nights. Um, okay. You know, we just ended this part of the season with the Leandria Johnson. Yes, I haven't seen that one yet. I've seen the preview, but I haven't seen the show yet. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And I was okay. on that show. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to check it out because I got, you know, got to see what's going on. So, that, that had to be kind of powerful. That had to be real powerful. It was I'm beautiful. Sure. It was beautiful work. Yeah. I yeah. honor all of the people who come forth to put their stories out and to heal yeah. their families. And it's an amazing intergenerate. We we have so much work to do as a people because we will get mad about R. Kelly. <laughs> She's sip sipping. We'll get mad about Harvey Weinstein and we'll get mad about this thing and that thing. But what's going on in your family? What's going on in your household? People don't, people don't talk What's about going on? What secret on. haven't you told? You can't go and talk to your cousins yeah. and your aunties. 
because of whatever, right? Yeah. yeah okay. okay. So when you watch anything that is available to you, what I say is when you're watching it, do your work. That's what Iyama says. Do, don't just watch as someone who's a judge. Yeah. Watch as someone who's saying, ooh, ouch, amen. Ooh, let me take notes. Okay, right. let me see. To help ourselves and we got some stuff going on there. Yeah. We to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're in the eye, so that's why we see it. But everybody else ain't in the eye, and they did they, they got it, and they not them. Right, right, right. You know, wow, that's powerful. That's, that's interesting. Okay, so so what to so what three sips of motivation that you can give these ladies that anybody that's on here that may be broken, maybe trying to start a business, maybe trying to find themselves, maybe going through a divorce, maybe just hurt or just just want to be at peace. What three sips of motivation can you give these ladies before we, you know, yeah. My three sips of motivation is, is going to be built off of purpose, pleasure, and passion. Go ahead. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That works. So, that works. so, first of all, your purpose, your purpose shows up wherever you are. A lot of us are thinking that we got to get somewhere in order to be in purpose. But if you can't be in purpose right where you are, then you're not in purpose. If you got to be in purpose to get, and, and I got to get over there, I got to go on this stage, I gotta, then you, you're not in purpose. Because when you're in purpose right where you are, then your gift makes room for you. I like that. I like that. Carla, type that. Ain't <laughs> cousin. <laughs> and so that's number one. Oh, how do you spell your name again? So that's number one. That's how you spell my name. And it's also on the tag that she has there. Yes. Um, and then the second one is pleasure. My, my husband's favorite saying is from, from the Funkadelics, right? Okay. From okay. George Clinton, the Funkadelics. Oh, okay. okay. Wait a Ain't nothing good unless you play with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's from the Funkadelics. Ain't nothing good unless you play yeah, with it. Yeah, absolutely right, right? about that one. Yeah. So how do you play? How do you play? What's your relationship with your self-care? Is it radical or is it reluctant? If you have a reluctant relationship with your self-care and your pleasure, then, then it, your manifestation is a struggle. And your, your purpose and your gift will make room for you and it won't be, a, it might stretch you, but you won't be a strain. Many of us are straining and we're calling it doing the work, but that's not purpose and it's showing pleasure. It's, 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 it's hard, it's aggravating. <laughs> and then the last one is passion. When you're in your passion, you've already done your work in purpose and pleasure. And your passion, it will drive you when you don't, when you don't feel like it. Your passion will fuel you up. It is the fire of God. It's the fi- it's a, it, your passion is, is what will deter- make you determine when it feels like a failure. When you're passionate about something, you show up no matter who's showing out or who's not there. You show up. You show up because this is your like this like I can't not be a teacher. I can't and, and I, I'm I'm so passionate about teaching and pleasure and, and transformation that anywhere I go is gonna spill out of me. And 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 so the your passion will drive you and you don't even you don't know you being driven. <laughs> oh, she, that's good right there. <laughs> oh yeah, Nick, Nick, Ola, Tesla, huh? You know, no, no. So it's funny that you mentioned him, Tesla. Okay, because everything that Tesla studied was not popular at the time when he was revealing it about energy. And many of us have become so afraid of God. We have a fear-based relationship with God that it, you may think that it's passion, but it's really fear. See, these things mimic each other, right? Right. And so in all of that, in those three, your purpose, your pleasure, and your passion, 
for me, I believe it's a formula of freedom. The last thing I will leave as a bonus is that in my message is that rebirth is not a one-time event. Yeah, I read that. Rebirth is not a one-time event. The seasons of your life will call for another rebirth. There are times, even when you're in marriage, in relationships, the person that you married 10 years ago may not be the same person, and we got to check up on it. Sometimes we got to check in and check up on it because you, you want that person to be that person and something has grown, something has shifted. And sometimes we need to rebirth our relationship. Sometimes we need to rebirth our, rebirth our physicality. Sometimes we need to rebirth our heart. Sometimes we need to rebirth our purpose, our pleasure, our passion. We need to rebirth it so that, because Nicodemus said in the Bible, how shall I enter into my mother's womb and be born again? See, Nicodemus was thinking about the literal translation. And many of us are thinking about the literal. Right, right. Right? I'm going to be a baby again? No, but your thinking has to shift. And a baby don't take care of itself. And that's where a midwife comes in. Yep. And I said at the beginning of the interview. So. Wow, you did that. You did that. See, that's why I knew when I met, when I met Ms. Latonya that she was powerful. She did a great event that night. And she continues to win and encourage us to let us know that, you know what, we can be reborn again. And she wants us women to get ourselves together for us. A lot of times people don't think about it. They think well, we're taking care of everybody else. But well, we forget about the person we look at in the mirror. And I'm glad that you're bringing this energy. And, bringing and this we think we've cool. done the work. Do we think yeah. we've oh, done yeah. the work. Yeah. Oh, I went to yeah. the workshop. Yeah. I went to the woman's yeah. conference. And then I go did. to church. And then what you, but then what you and did then what? after the fact. And then what? It's sitting. It's shell. It's shell. Oh, right. wait a minute. Okay. Let me see. That was December 2018. <laughs> that was 2015. <laughs> uh, what's that? Ooh, that's even 2012. Yeah, yeah, Just sitting yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So she's giving y'all the information that y'all can reach her in case you want to go to any of her classes. You want to be part of her master class or you want to be part of her... Um, the uh, women don't give me the word. You're right. I do have master no, no, classes master class. too. I, was trying to think. I do have those months. though. I do have those. Okay, the master class. <laughs> you have the uh, when we uh, starting over the the juicy you, the juicy you, and the, the rights of passage. yeah, the rights of passage. Yeah. 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 those are yeah. the, the three yeah. easiest. And I also have a group on Facebook called Good Girls Gone Goddess. I typically go in on Wednesdays, but I decided to be here with you. See? <laughs> and see, <laughs> and I call them supplementals. Because yeah, it helps. Mm -hmm. And yeah. those are supplemental schools to just go in and nurture us and nourish us because we're so used to really just doing drive bys, yeah. spiritual drive bys. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. one of those. Yep. So, you know, I hope that you all enjoyed the Sip Sip with Kathleen. Again, my guest is Miss Latanya Taylor. The name of her book is My Journey Rebirth. My a, Juicy Rebirth. A Juicy, excuse me. My, a juicy, my juicy Rebirth. Get it right, Kathleen. Get it right. <laughs> um, you definitely can get this book. They can get it on your site. Yeah. LatanyaTaylor.com. Definitely get it. It's powerful, right? It's powerful, right? A little book with a lot of punch. Yep. I know, right? And you can carry it in your purse. So where we are, they're about to close. I hope y'all enjoyed the interview. If you're interested in being on my show, definitely inbox me. It's Kathleen with a KP Martin. Or you can see me on Instagram. What's Motivate up, me, Kathleen. Y'all stay blessed. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you and do me a favor. Thank you. Like, like, like. Share, share, share. We are out of here. Bye-bye. Ciao, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>